the forest starts to shift the air is still the light is dropping and then movement this is the moment we wait for it's late afternoon the golden hour has come and gone but this is when wildlife gets bold when they emerge from the shadows just as the light begins to disappear so i've got good news and bad news good news the wildlife is getting active bad news the light is fading fast i didn't hesitate i raised the camera found my subject framed it just right and so i got the shot but looking at the back of the camera it's all green it was a moment too good to delete but way too flawed to share but don't worry i have something on my laptop which can fix this time to go back to the studio and bring life to it all right back in the studio now for those new here hey i'm apurupa de i'm a wildlife photographer who believes the best moments don't always happen in perfect light let's open the image so it was shot on a nikon z9 with a 400 mm f2.8 tc lens the aperture was wide open at f4 since the built-in teleconverter was on i had already pushed the shutter speed down to 1 by 160 which was as low as i could safely go given the situation so i had to punch in the iso to a value of 8000 which is quite high if i zoom in here you can clearly see the grains across the image look how grainy it is Honestly, thanks to my camera, it's a miracle that the subject is even sharp, but the noise, yeah, it's intense. That's when DxO Pure RAW 5 steps in, an AI-powered noise reduction tool that's built for situations just like this. Unlike basic noise filters, this one is smart. It can tell the difference between the real texture and the digital garbage. Stick with me till the end where I will be demonstrating how we can enhance this image with Pure RAW 5 and get the rare moment to life. Alright, let's jump into how we can use DxO Pure RAW 5 to clean up your wildlife images, especially those taken in low light. You can use Pure RAW 5 in a couple of ways as a standalone app just by opening your RAW files directly from Finder or as a plugin through Lightroom or Photoshop. For this demo, I will open the image in DxO first, do the denoising and then send it to Adobe Photoshop for final touches. Now, once your image is open, you will see two options. Process, Process with Preview. Let's begin with the Process option. This method is quick. Great if you already know the settings you want and don't need a live review. Under presets, you will notice a few options. Deep Prime 3. It's fast and delivers solid results. Deep Prime XD2S. This one gives you better detail and slightly higher quality, though it may take a bit longer to process. The last preset here is designed for x sensors used in Fuji cameras. I shoot Nikon so I am skipping that but if you are a Fuji user, that one is for you. We will come back to uh, presets in a bit. Now if you click on the corrections tab, you will get more noise controls. Luminance noise reduction. This slider adjusts how much noise is removed. Force details helps bring back fine details that might get softened during denoising. Optical corrections, one of DxO's strongest features. It corrects for lens softness and includes controls for lens sharpness, v netting, chromatic aberration, distortion. You can toggle these on or off depending on what you need. And once you have found settings that work for your workflow, you can save it as a preset for future use. Once everything is set, 
click apply then choose your output format save destination name your file and the export target whether it's photoshop lightroom or just your drive then click process now and pure raw will handle the rest this is the first no preview route perfect for batch processing or when you already trust your preset now let's take a look at the process with preview option this is where you can get more interactive with your edits at the top right you will see three icons next to the preview window click on the first one this gives you access to global adjustments so again all changes here will apply across the entire image from here i am choosing deep prime xs2s again for the best quality if i enable the comparison view you will see dxo is already doing a fantastic job now i will tweak the luminance slider dragging it right for stronger noise reduction then i will boost force detail just a little and add a touch of lens sharpness that's the basic global workflow but let's go one step deeper this time we will use local adjustments with these you can isolate specific areas in the photo and apply adjustments just to this that's incredibly helpful when you want to preserve subject details while softening a noisy background you will find the brush tool here adjust brush size set feathering for soft or hard edges use flow to control how much effect is applied and tweak opacity for subtle refinements selecting a medium brush size and drawing a rough mask around it just draw draw and draw okay so here we go now i will fine tune the edges with a bit more feathering to keep it natural the process took some time so i fast forwarded this part a little yeah now the selection looks fine you can uncheck show mask to declutter your view but don't worry the mask is still active in the background with the mask selected i will now boost luminance slightly push up force detail and increase lens sharpness to get the details just right now let's handle the background i duplicate the existing mask from here then i invert it and if i check show mask you can see that gives me a new mask for the rest of the image i can now apply a different set of adjustments this time more luminance for smoother background lower force detail and turn off sharpening to avoid drawing attention there there's a bit of red spill on the jackal from the background mask so i will grab the eraser tool zoom in and carefully clean that up yeah selecting a big brush and just clean 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 it will take some time oops i mistakenly erased the selected mask so again redrawing it now erasing red spills from its legs and yes that's pretty much it once you are happy with both global and local adjustments head to the output tab again i will choose dng as the output format save the destination folder rename the file then i will choose to export it to photoshop and click process now 
within 10 to 15 seconds depending on your max speed dxo exports and opens the image directly in photoshop if you're using lightroom or another editor just select it as your target instant and from here you are ready to move on with your creative edits all right the image is now open in photoshop's camera raw since the base is much cleaner and sharper after noise reduction i can finally dive into the creative part first i'm zooming it a bit to inspect the details yeah looks good now moving on to the color correction boosting the vibrance slightly then fine tuning the tint and temperature to bring back the natural tones yeah i will increase the whites a touch add a bit of contrast for depth and finally a quick crop for a better composition and that's it we are done here's a quick comparison for your better understanding and here is a nature photographed in extreme low light condition with iso 12800 and hey if you are planning to get any dxo software don't forget to use my code OPPORUPA15 to get an exclusive 15% discount. Just a heads up, it's valid only for new users. You will find the link in the description below. While well, photography is not about perfect conditions, it's about showing up, being patient and trusting your tools. Low light shouldn't stop you from taking the shot. With a little work and the right software, you can bring the wild back to life. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, drop a like, leave a comment or subscribe for more such videos. And remember, the light may vanish, but the story doesn't have to.